Truth, satya, implies love, and firmness, agre, engenders and therefore serves as a synonym for force. I thus began to call the Indian movement satyagre, that is to say, the force that is born of truth and love or non-violence, and gave up the use of the phrase passive resistance in connection with it. So much so, that even in English writing we often avoided it, and used instead satyagre. It was said at that time, right, uh, by people like Einstein and many others, that Gandhi belongs to the ages, right? I mean, not just to India, not just to the world, but he belongs to the ages. Uh, would you <laughs> like to be like Gandhi? Mm, maybe. <laughs> I think it's very hard to be like he was. I think he was a great man. And I think he taught many people to... to um, fight for their rights in a peaceful way and that's what what we like so much about him if gandhi was alive today mm -hmm. how would you reinvent him to be more acceptable to the young generation i don't think anybody would have required to reinvent bapu because bapu would have been reinventing himself Periodically, the man who lived a life of experimentation would never have stagnated. So he would have reinvented himself as times change. Let's discuss what Gandhi is. So we'll do the brainstorming first. Yeah, we can do that. If we see Gandhi, when, when he was in India, before he went to England, he was dressed as a uh, traditional baniya, how they dressed. When he went to England to study there, he changed himself. He thought that, you know, the Western people cannot accept him. So maybe he dressed accordingly so that he could at least say hi, hello to them. The Gandhian view is that there's a re there is an intrinsic relationship between your own body and the body politic and the so-called inert world of nature outside. What he did, in effect, was to transform his own body into a complete ecosystem. And this is where you would have to look at how every little thing, you know, his enemas, his fasting, what he ate, what he didn't eat, what time he went to bed, what he wore, this is all part of what I call Gandhi's own ecosystem. Mr. Chauhan, if Mahatma Gandhi were alive today, would he approve of your water business? Definitely not. And uh, not only Mahatma Gandhi, I think it is way before him, the Banya community did not accept the concept of selling water. And uh, water is something which you are supposed to give free and you have matka outside your house from where uh, people can take water. The earth, the air, the land and the water are not an inheritance from our forefathers, but a loan from our children. So we have to hand over to them, at least as it was handed over to us. What do you know about Mahatma Gandhi? He served for the nation without any expressions. He wanted to grow the villages. So as, uh, I know something about them. What about young people? Do they want to learn about Mahatma Gandhi? No. They don't want to learn. If we say them about Mahatma Gandhi, you go. It is our ancient period. Now if we want the computer period. No, we don't want to learn how to create Gandhi. Yes, some of them are saying. In India, far too long we have built individuals. We have to build institutions. And it should be, you know, people should come and take over. I think that is all the, these are some of the learned uh, essence of Gandhiji's teachings which are relevant even today.
If India is to attain true freedom, then sooner or later the fact must be recognized that people will have to live in villages, not in towns, in huts, not in palaces. I call him a good lawyer because, as I said, law is a lawyer is a profession to ensure peace, harmony, goodness in the society. And the fact that Gandhiji was able to do that, I call him an excellent lawyer. <laughs> Do you think Mahatma Gandhi is relevant in India today? Well, if truth, love, and peace, and non-violence as a corollary, or as the fountain of peace, are important to civilization, then he will always remain relevant. Because, as he said in his own words, uh, truth, peace, and non-violence were as old as the rivers and the mountains, and he had not invented them. And so as long as those are uh, important for the existence of humanity, he will always be relevant. There is no such thing as Gandhiism, and I do not want to leave any sect after me. Was it that you wanted to pull my leg, transporting me to the frozen Himalayan heights of Mahatmaship and claiming for yourself Absolution from having to follow my precepts? <laughs>